you find yourself lost in Irving Land. Last time, Professor Robinson was posting a sign to warn people that there's ionized gas nearby. We never did figure out who the sign is supposed to be for, because there are seven of them on the planet and they all know about the gas. Anyway, while he was pounding it into the ground, he released a bunch of gas and knocked himself out. Back at the chariot, Don is unloading their drilling equipment and wondering why it takes so long to put a sign up. Professor Robinson is a reflective man who likes to take his time. And the more time he takes, the less work for you, right, Smith? Major, I have told you before that I suffer from a very delicate back. <laughs> I have a cyst the size of a marble at the base of my spine that cuts off all feeling to my whole left leg. And since I had that stupid heart attack and have to be on blood thinners, I can't even get it removed until well into next year. Whine for me, doctor. <laughs> Will and Don discover John and drag him to safety. <coughs> I'll be all right. <coughs> well, it looks like I forgot to read that sign. Okay, he put it up for himself and then forgot to read it. I suggest he go back to the ship and brainstorm a better method of communication. Since he's just sitting around, we may as well have Smith do something. John gives him a bundle of explosive and says, take this up to drill site five. The hole is all prepared. All you do is put it in, pull the pin, and leave. Will can show you the way. But when they get to that bog where John got in trouble, Smith balks. He starts finding an excuse to send Will back to the chariot. And Will being Will, he just can't say no to Dr. Smith. I wonder why. They're losing daylight, so they decide to pack up and try again tomorrow. They can see what kind of mess Smith made of that job at the same time. <laughs> Little did they realize that Dr. Smith's explosion released the beast from 20,000 fathoms. Back at the ship, Dr. Smith is making a Ouija board so he can contact his departed Uncle Thaddeus. Why he came up with this right now is anybody's guess, but it has Penny's interest. She wants to know what it is, how it works, and all the rest. O oh, eternal powers of a spirit world, O oh, well-loved and well-remembered absent friend and consanguineous kin, dear Uncle Thaddeus, give us a sign that we may know you are near. Penny is a little uncertain how much of a sign a simple wind is, but they continue. Of course, one question they haven't asked. Suppose Smith does manage to conjure up Uncle Thaddeus. Can he control him? <laughs> was Uncle Thaddeus a landscaper when he was alive? We are not alone. They are here with us. Oh, eternal powers of the spirit world. Grasp this humble artifact and materialize your presence so that we may recognize you. <laughs> I'm guessing he wasn't a successful dishwasher. The board starts to float around and Penny has had enough. Cass! Hey, oh. dear, what's the matter? What happened? Uh, the scariest thing. First, the glass, it broke into pieces. Uh, and then the Ouija board, it, it flew up in the air all by itself. What? And, and zoomed down on a rock and broke up. I'm breaking up too, but in a different way. All right, Smith. Now tell us what really happened. They figure Smith was screwing with her and pulled off some kind of illusion. But he's got a cut on his hand from the broken glass, and we know he wouldn't do something like that voluntarily. If he tried to cut himself, he'd faint. I was afraid Uncle Thaddeus would not like it here. Are you sure Uncle Thaddeus did that? Indeed, yes. He was a very powerful man in life, always throwing things about when something didn't please him. You knew that. You had a fair idea he wouldn't like it here. And you tried to conjure him up anyway. So you wanted this to happen. Dr. Smith, you are weird. 
They all brush him off and go to bed. Warning, warning. I want an immediate reading on the object. Composition of object does not compute. Genetic code indecipherable. Can you locate its position? Due north by horizontal bearing. Distance by velocity of light. Velocity of light? 65 meters. They can't see it, but whatever it is, it starts destroying their tables outside and throwing more things around. Smith says, I'll go out and have a talk with Uncle Thaddeus. Uncle Thaddeus, is that you? I know I never should have summoned you. I'm very sorry. It's all their fault. They don't believe in you. I've tried my best, but... Oh, no! Don't! I don't think he's buying it. I think he's blaming you. As sunrise approaches, the tirade stops as quickly as it started. Smith is still talking to spirits, but the men are trying to find a better explanation. Does your uncle happen to be a three-toed freak, Smith? Why, yes, Major. Around the town where he dwelt, he was known as Three-Toed Tad. Uh, what was it the robot said? Uh, genetic code indecipherable? He also said invisible, indestructible, and irresistible. And yet with enough energy to cause all that damage. What kind of energy? The vital energy of the spirit world, madam. With three-toed footprints? The footprints have nothing to do with it. Well, then... What could have made them? Some nocturnal denizen of this miserable planet seeking food. That's why it threw that rock at you so it could kill you and eat you. But even the nocturnal denizens around here realize that taking a bite of a smith would just taste like slime. Don says, let's get some breakfast and then go check out Drill Site 5. Uh, Major West. What is it, Smith? I hope you won't be too disappointed if you don't find anything up at uh, Drill Site 5. And what is that supposed to mean? You said yourself the explosion sounded like a damn squib. And with your superior knowledge of pyrotechnics, you're probably right. You know, if he had kept his mouth shut, he might have gotten away with it. But the only time Dr. Smith and mouth shut go in the same sentence is if the word never is in there somewhere. You put the blasting pack in the hole marked with the arrow. Oh, indeed I did. Uh-huh. And you put the metal capping back on the hole before you left. Naturally, that's SOP for all blasting operations. There is no arrow and no metal capping. Now what did you do with the explosives? I want the truth. Under threat of great pain, he admits he threw it in the bog. At least we know where that energy came from. You combine that explosive with whatever elements are in that bog and it evidently unleashes a force we have no power to control. But how did that make the footprints? We better get up to that drill site, Don. I want to tell you one thing, Smith. I promise you, that bog may be off limits to everyone else, but from now on, you're going to be swimming in it every night looking for your three-toed uncle. Swimming in it? But I can't swim. Maybe Uncle Thaddeus will carry you on his shoulders. Just don't upset him or he'll throw you. Don, come here. Look at this. Now, what kind of force could remain invisible and yet have enough molecular weight to leave tracks like this? And only comes out at night, like Smith's Uncle Thaddeus. Do you think it'll be back? Well, we'd better be prepared for that possibility. Look, we've got just enough time to set the explosives and be back here before nightfall. I want us to be here if and when something happens. Yet another new encounter with an inhabitant of this planet. It'll probably end the way the others do with us killing it. While they watch and wait, Dr. Smith is talking Maureen and the kids into a seance to try and placate Uncle Thaddeus. Now then, let us all join hands. One over, one under. Here's my question. Even supposing it is possible to contact dead spirits, how do you know this is the process? Who came up with it and how did they know? Or is it just fake stuff that sounds spooky so phony mediums can fleece gullible marks, such as Dr. Smith. Let's get back to the ship. Well, they didn't kill it, but it wasn't for lack of trying. I think that's invisible creature talk for stop shooting at me. 
At the ship, Smith's seance has taken a weird turn. I have never heard of a seance with a robot playing guitar before. Everybody, back in the ship! Back in the ship! You what you've done! We were about to hear from the spirit world! What is this? What is that? Warning, warning! What? Unidentified object behind you! Warning, warning! Into the ship. Unidentified Hurry. object! In front of you. Uncle Thaddeus didn't like the music, and he's going to give you a weapon for it. They're all inside the ship, but that thing is pounding on the door. They turn on the force field. Warning! Warning! Losing power! Losing! It's taking all our power. It feeds on it. Listen, the thumping has stopped. That's because dawn is on the horizon. Whatever it is, it doesn't like daylight. But it feeds on power, so maybe they can make a trap for it. <laughs> I think that's going to work. That's the cage the keeper left behind. Nice they found a use for it, besides putting Smith in the occasional timeout. Warning! Warning! Unidentified object caught in trap. Warning! And it did work. They caught it. Now what? They decide to leave it until morning and see if it becomes visible or what happens if it gets exposed to daylight. But during the night, Smith convinces Will to take him through the bog so he can placate the spirits. Will doesn't believe in spirits, but he'll show Smith the path. Warning. Hey, Keeper, is there a warranty on this thing? Smith and Will are in the middle of the bog, placating spirits with promises that their imprisoned brother will return. There's no response, so he says, let's find a different spot. But now they can both hear footsteps. Someone is following them. Over here! Not that far over there. Now Smith can't find him, and he's getting a little panicky. Will? Smith! Ah! Hey, now we know what planet Sweetums came from. Will. 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 Is. Is that. You. Nice to meet you, Uncle Thaddeus. Nobody told us they mummified you. Oh, no, no. I really didn't mean anything. I wouldn't do anything to harm you. I wouldn't hurt you for anything, only please, please don't come any closer! I have questions. Dr. Smith is too relieved to ask them, but now he has another problem. One shoe is all that's left of Will. How is he going to tell the family? Dr. Smith, where are you? Dr. Smith, can't you hear me? Where are you? That's funny. I can't see myself. Is someone there? Who are you? Dr. Smith, is that you? Gosh, if only I could see myself. No, Will is invisible now. How, why, we aren't going to find out. Judy discovers that not only has the creature escaped, Will and Dr. Smith are both missing. It was a fateful journey, one of which I was prepared to sacrifice myself if need be to save you all. Where is he? The bug. <laughs> Bark. We'll find him, darling. You left him out there. Oh, Dr. Smith, how could you? He's Dr. Smith, that's how. She keeps trying to believe in him, and he keeps letting her down. I don't know what it's going to take. Well that thing may need their help. I think it's having some kind of seizure. Oh, it's fighting with invisible will. Why? What does it want? Oh, no! <laughs> 
whatever it wanted. I get the feeling it wanted to finish it before that happened. It failed. And Will is visible again. He explains what happened, and for once, his dad believes him without question. From now on, I shall devote the rest of my life to the service of my fellow man, with no thought of self. That brave little boy shall not have died in vain. A new Zachary Smith shall burst upon the world with the... No! Oh, no! No, not so soon! Will has to explain that he's not a ghost. He mentions losing his shoe and Smith says, I know where it is. They head off to find it. After the commercial break, we get a little comedy relief with the robot, Dr. Smith and Will fishing. Dr. Smith, of course, has caught nothing and the robot is taunting about it. Smith leaves in a huff. What's wrong? You sure are acting funny. If you don't like space trout, just say so. Others back at the ship might have different tastes, so don't be selfish. Warning. Immediate danger. What kind of danger? My sensors will not accept the possibility of its existence. Holly! It's Robbie the Robot. I'll talk more about him next time because he was a genuine science fiction phenomenon. Right now, let's talk about this episode. I don't get it. I don't see what the point of this episode was. What was that thing? Why was it invisible? Why was Will invisible? Where did it come from? Where did it go? Where did it come from, Cotton Eye Joe? What did Smith throwing the explosive into that bog have to do with its appearance? And why did it just disappear? And why won't we ever see it or refer to it again? This episode isn't just lazy, it's one big plot hole. Nothing makes sense. It's a little too convenient that just about the time we raise this invisible monster, Smith wants to play psychic and contact his great uncle Thaddeus. Seriously, the best part of this episode is the robot playing the guitar. Show me that, tell me where I can buy the album, and leave the rest of the episode on the cutting room floor. I'll see you next time you find yourself lost in Irvingland.